Now, the organization undoing tax abuses outrage at the electricity tariff hike announced by NOSA. Alta says it will be difficult for most South Africans to afford the increases while still experiencing a record number of rolling blackouts. The embattled power utility initially requested a 32% hike, but NOSA settled for an 18.65% increase. The hikes will kick in from the 1st of April. Liz McDade, Alta's parliamentary and energy advisor, joins us now uh, for more on what she thinks or what the, uh, what's on it, or what the organization Alta rather uh, thinks about this. Now, uh, Liz, thank you very much for your time here on ENCA. Firstly, of course, you know, um, it is ESCOM's constitutional obligation uh, to give South Africans uh, uninterrupted power. They have not been able to do that for a number of years now, the worst being the past 12 months or so. Uh, and this, I, I, I assume, will probably be even worse when it comes to the poor. What can we do as South Africans to make sure that, uh, you know, uh, this is granted to us? It's, it's something that is stipulated in the Bill of Rights and the Constitution. So I think this is really why people are, are well, should be unhappy, and why Alta is outraged, is, is that at the moment what we're experiencing is an electricity utility which can't deliver. And yet we are being asked to pay for something we don't have. Yeah. Uh, and, and that is just absolutely unacceptable. Unfortunately, by not paying, it means that we, 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 we have, there's no money for ESCOM to fix the things they need to fix. Mm. But for year after year, we have been having um, uh, mismanaged and corrupt uh, actions at ESCOM. And each time... And this is what Alta has been saying each year. Each time ESCOM comes to the regulator and says, give us more. Um, so, so we think that, uh, it, you know, this really is outrageous that under all of this that we are facing, the, 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 the ESCOM has still received an above inflation uh, price hike. And of course, we are now going to see the poorer communities yeah. are having to choose. Do I buy food or electricity? Mm. And unfortunately, you know, that goes back to the fact that it's their constitutional obligation, you know. They have the obligation to actually give us uninterrupted power. But then again, like you say, it's going to come to that uh, eventually. And you spoke about, uh, you know, the debt that, uh, you know, municipalities, government departments and the consumer itself has uh, to ESCOM. So uh, an area, for instance, such as Soweto had, uh, you know, com uh, communities and other communities actually besides Soweto decided we're not going to pay for electricity that you don't give us. And that's when they stopped. But that solution d doesn't help us today, does it? Despite the, the corruption that we all know and saw, uh, the fact that people decided we're not going to pay because you're not giving us anything is not helping us anymore, is it? It's not. Um, and the problem is that, you know, great for Soweto to say, well, we're not going to pay because you're not giving us. But what about the rest of the country? So if everyone stops paying completely... Mm then ESCOM has no money to fix the things that we want fixed. So it is a, a and I think this is what NURSA did acknowledge. They were between a rock and a hard place. Well, yeah. uh, you know, their job is to ensure that ESCOM has enough money to keep the lights on, but also that the electricity prices are affordable. And, and this is an impossible task right now for a regulator. So I think what we can be well encouraged by is when the regulator gave the ruling, they also said the conditions, the conditions are that basically ESCOM must improve its delivery. Yeah. The question, of course, is what happens if you don't? What's ESCOM exactly. going to do? Pull their license? And then what? Exactly. Um, but I, I also think that something we need to consider is, is what we have seen is that ESCOM and the municipalities are moving more and more to fix uh, prices as part of the the electricity tariff. So, so in the in the past, what you would say is we're paying so much per unit of electricity. Mm. Now, you find that your bill is like 200 rand, whether you get a cent of electricity or any any electricity, and then you still pay for the electricity that you get. So, you know, this is something that we, we with the outer belief, we need to really tackle because it's. Um, uh, it's very unfair for people to be to be paying for something they're not getting. 
Yeah, it is. And, you know, my question was always that, you know, what can we do legally as South Africans? Because like you're explaining, even with NURSA and their decision saying they were stuck between a rock and a hard place, I feel like we're in some sort of prison because, you know, there's a monopoly happening as well because ESCOM is the only power utility that South Africans have. We have no other options. So we are in some sort of prison where we have, we're given no choice. But you also say in, um, you know, the article that was written, your quote is saying that we need a forward-thinking uh, minister of um, energy uh, right do you see anybody in the current government that could take over that uh, particular department who's forward thinking um, I, I'll rather not answer that <laughs> uh, but I would just say that present incumbent is not giving us hope but but I, I also think uh, to come back to your earlier point which I think is important is as South Africans, we often just feel despair, hopelessness. What can we do? But there is something that we could do, is we are coming up to budget time. And if you remember, the, the Minister of Finance uh, consistently says, OK, so what should be in the budget? What should I do? And ask for input. So if every South African wrote to the Minister of Finance and said, incentivize, help us to put solar panel on the roofs of our houses, pay us to do this, and let us feed into the grid. There's yeah. no red tape. And then we can supply more electrons. That's what we need, electricity into the grid. And and in that way, we can alleviate some of the load shedding. Plus, of course, you would have power for yourself in your house and you would feed your excess. So, mm. And the Minister of Finance can help with that by directing funding towards those kinds of programs. So mm. I think we as citizens, as you say, we have these rights, we kind of forget how to utilize them. So maybe this is a space that we can move uh, in, the, in the very near future. Mm. So, Liz, I have to ask you this question. I mean, for years now, we've had load shedding. We've spoken to experts. We've spoken to people such as yourselves. And the solutions that you tell us sound so simple. Uh, and I know that the problem with South Africa mm. is red tape. But I have to ask you, what else do you think is happening? Because for years now, we've had load shedding since 2008. Actually, even before that, it just started becoming a bigger problem in 2008. That is more than a decade ago. And all the solutions that you mention uh, sound so simple to implement. But they are not being implemented. So what do you think is happening? There's this thing called political will. Mm. Um, and let's be clear, we, we had a renewable energy program which was stalled because the political ideology of the day was that we needed nuclear power. Um, and it was civil society had to stand up and stop that nuclear deal. Yeah. Now what we seem to have is a energy minister who is in love with oil and gas and other fossils. So once again, in, in my um, mind, what we are seeing is that there are lobby groups and vested interests which are not acting in the national interest. Because the national interest would be put on as much renewables, independent producers, anybody. Why has ESCOM in the last 10 years never built a renewable energy power plant, as far as I recall, or maybe one small wind turbine? But, but you know, why is that? It's not there's a lack of technology. It's not a lack of money. It's political will, in my view. Yeah. And I mean, Liz, thank you very much for speaking to us. For me also, what's also problematic is that when you try and get those that are supposed to be held accountable to speak to us at, as the media, it's like an obstacle course. We can't get a lot of them on air. And of course, uh, the questions that we have most of the time should be directed to them. What is the problem? Why is there no political will? And also uh, the fact that the president had his own presidential solutions to our power crisis. One of them was actually getting rid of red tape. It's been months. We're on stage six load shedding now. We had an entire December on load shedding, but still there's red tape. Well, not only is there red tape, and I think this is just coming back to the NERSA decision, is what we've also seen is the, I think they're called the coal mafia. But like criminal elements that are actually, as people have said, sabotaging, but really preventing the ESCOM maintenance and fixing from happening. So 
if there's a if we really want to see action, and we should be seeing a lot more law enforcement. Yes, belatedly, uh, in December we saw we saw the the defence force at the power station, but people are saying it's not really making that much difference. But there should be money going into going after those crooks, um, finding out what's going on, uh, having more people on the ground to check what's happening, and prosecuting because. We need to send a message yeah. to those that think they can exploit the situation that they can't. We're not mm. going to accept it as a country. And that's what we need the president to be doing. Yeah. Well, thank you so much, Liz, for speaking to us. And the big word uh, after the announcement of load shedding from ESCOM in the past couple of months, you guys would remember at home, is sabotage. Who is sabotaging ESCOM and in turn sabotaging us as South Africans and why aren't they being dealt with?